Hello and welcome back to this video. In the previous videos, we went through the modeling of T-stop that we calculated by hand. First, we went through ANSYS modeling with a solid element, and then we went through a shell model. We compared the results and the accuracy. Uh, the first uh, mode has been investigated and we saw the results. Now we are going to continue with the other two modes with shell elements in this video. Let's do so. Again, we can duplicate the shell model uh, that we have from the previous model. In this model, what is changed the diameter of the hole because we are going to use a weaker bolt. It was M20 in the first model. Now we are going to change it to 12 so we can go to geometry and modify the hole. Uh, also, it is possible we have parametric calculation, which is not a part of this uh, video. So here we need to modify the diameter. It was 11, representing 22 millimeter for the M20. For M12, it should be 13 millimeter. So the diameter needs to be changed to 13 instead of 22. So 4.5 millimeter needs to be applied to have a smaller diameter. Now it is 6.5 as radius. The same for the other one. Now we need to have the washer size for M12, 24 millimeter is for the headed part. Now here we can see that we have the original diameter, which was 35 millimeter in diameter. We can just delete that edge also you can uh, have a new window to show with the edges there is no changes to the other parties except the supporting plate so here also we need to modify the hole diameter and the washer size 4.5 4.5 we can just cross check that it is 13 millimeter in diameter. Then we can make the circle. 28. And just the extra surface needs to be deleted. looks good and always check that you have all the parties to be shared there is nothing to share we can directly go to the before that it's better to change the name mode number two and now we need to just update the model we didn't add anything for the geometry, but the location of the bolt is changed, so we might need to uh, cross-check the bolts. Here we can see that the question mark is in the geometry. So four faces towards one. Here we can see, you can just select and hide the body. So these two faces need to be added then what else one two three four five and six 
then we can use reverse or inverted visibility to go through the other party now this is fine we have the gap and then here we need to modify for the mobile part and still we need to modify the location of the bolt in order to have the correct length of the bolt now we need to change also the diameter if we go through our matcat we can change this 245 to 84.3 and according to that 5.18 will be the diameter so 5.18 here it is the other one just select the mobile the reference changing the wide position of the bolt and 5.18 for the diameter looks good and here it's better if we select all of these parties now we can generate the mesh and then contact tools to check if uh, the connection between two parties are correct without any gap and penetration is almost zero looks fine now we need to modify the force uh, the force was 123 kilonewton which was for the first mode and now we are in the second mode so 123 is still the resistance in the first mode but before that with 79 kilonewton the second mode would happen so we have to modify that to 79 kilonewton then we can just clear generate the data and after that just solving the analysis now we need just to wait until the solution is finalized and we can check the results we can also check how many iterations are already done for now with seven iterations the first convergence has been reached and now it's going to apply 40 percent of the load now it has been completed we have uh, now more deformation because it is now lifting from the sides if we look at the here we can see that the bolts are visible the same value of 10 as 10 times uh, bigger than the reality here we can see in the previous one even with 10 times bigger we could not see the bolts and we can see that the locations close to the bolts are not uh, yielded yet instead the bolts are deformed and so very small um, plastic strain here we can select So here we can see that uh, where we have plastic S-strain and the contact tools here we can see that the area of prying force is not very close to the bolt so it shows that uh, it's in mode 2 and also the bolts forces 54 kN 
54 kilonewton and we can compare with our calculation in this mode it is 48 so 54 48 it's uh, close and and the difference is quite reasonable that's the case for mode number two we can directly go to mode number three shell mode number three we need to modify the geometry so now we are going to use m8 which needs to have a hole diameter of nine millimeter with one millimeter clearance uh, we need to modify that part first So it was 6.5, now it should be 4.5. And the other one as well. Also, we need to sketch the washer diameter, which is 15 millimeter for the head side. and the sketch and now we can just delete this part this is 7.5 that's correct and the same for the supporting plate two millimeter two millimeter In that side, it is 16 millimeter for the knot. Now it's ready. Again, uh, if you change something, uh, serious then you might need to check the workbench to have uh, the share if you modify something for the plates or something like that but uh, in this case we just change the diameter of the hole so it's not something we need to modify anything else now we can go to model update it and then just change the location of the bolts first let's check this four to one face we need to add these Two locations for the contact that's correct and then we can invert visibility to the target so six to three and then here This face it should be a face, yes. And the other face, and then changing the location minus 25, 12 millimeter, and the diameter. If we come back to here. Shear stress for M8 is 36.6, so the equivalent radius would be 
and then the other one the mobile part reference minus 25 and 12. so now we need to modify the diameter diameter should be 3.41 3.41 and then the mesh it's better to just select those elements one more time and then generate the mesh it's better every time after the mesh is completed uh, solve this contact tool to check if your model is with no gap otherwise you might see a lot of uh, iteration and then there might not be a good solution or reliable solution for the results here we can see that that looks pretty good now the force needs to be changed so if we have uh, m8 then the maximum capacity of the t-stop is 42 kilonewton and then clear generated data and we can solve it now if we come to the solution information we can find out uh, how many iterations are needed to complete this uh, task so after seven or eight iterations we have the first convergence i don't think that it takes more than 15 perhaps less than 15 would be enough for this solution I know 70 percent of the load is applied so 14 uh, iterations now we have the solution here 0 0.68 and if we look at here we can see that now uh, the plate is uh, not bent that much let's understand this it better with this one now we can see that from the very uh, bottom of the flange we have this gap uh, but compared to the first mode it's different how we can understand the difference between this and the first mode let's come back to 10 times a scale and so here we can see that the element is not yield at all the maximum is 235 and we do not have any plastic uh, failure at all here everything is less than 200 almost and there is no plastic strain and the best scale to understand is the contact tool here if you look at it from the top we can see that compared to the other cases now slightly this part is going to have contact and uh, this is a simulation of the task uh, for sure it differs from the code but as we can see uh, the deformation or at least for the equivalent stress we do not have a yield point at all then it comes to the forces here it's 23.3 kilonewton we can compare with the matcad it should be around 21 here we have two of those and in this mode we assume that the bolt uh, reaches to its capacity which is 21 kilonewton there are some factors for sure and here this is 23 which is pretty close the same as the other one now it's uh, very good if we compare these three modes together to understand uh, different modes we can open mode one and here i can bring one view and 
total information. Mode number two. This is mode number two. And mode number three. This is mode number one. So we can put it here. Then mode number two and then mode number three. And here we can see the differences between these three. So in the first mode, we had 0 0.79 millimeter with 123 kilonewton. In the mode number two, we had 0 0.83 millimeter uh, with 79 kilonewton. And now we have almost 0 0.7 millimeter with only 42 kilonewton. Now we can have also the uh, graph. For each case, we can see the differences between these three, especially the first and the third one. Here you can see that uh, the balls are very sturdy and they cannot uh, elongate that much, but here in the third failure mode with a smaller load it can just be lifted easier that was the end of this t-stop modeling with ANSYS uh, we went through the shell model and also solid model and we approved the accuracy between these two uh, methods of modeling it depends on your case for sure and uh, how accurate results you are looking for also we went through the different uh, failure modes for mode number one, two, three by changing the bolts and we compared the results in these videos. Again, I have to thank uh, EDR Medeso for providing the license for this tutorial. Also, I will continue with uh, one complete example for analyzing a beam connection to the column in a rigid manner and we'll go through hand calculation according to Eurocode 1993-18 and we will also model with ANSYS to compare the results and to understand how it looks like in a simulator. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.